Hello and welcome back. Today I will speak a little bit about the development system itself. If you don't understand everything, uh, it doesn't matter. I also don't go so deep into every part. There are two different ways to make games. One is with Assembler. Assembler is the language your CPU understand. So every CPU have a little bit different Assembler language. Assembler is very fast, but uncomfortable to program. So it takes very long. And you have to know the architecture of your CPU very well, especially in modern CPUs, uh, it's very complicated. The way we go is using C as a language. The problem is your hardware don't understand C. You need some program that translated your C code into computer language code. And this program is called compiler. So the compiler is something like a translator. There are many compiler for C out there. The main problem is most of them are for your personal computer. But in the Dreamcast is no normal Intel CPU. There's a Hitachi SH4 CPU. So we need a compiler that translated from C to SH4. There's an existing source code for your C compiler. And what you have to do is use this source code and compile it, but not for the normal personal PC. You have to compile it for the SH4. And this part I don't show here. The reason is I'm not very good at compiler stuff and there are very good tutorials on the DC emulation homepage. I think there's also a script. When you're using Linux, you just start the script and it makes everything automatically. This takes a little bit, so uh, compiling the complete C compiler can take half hour, one hour, two hours, depends on your CPU. The only advice I give to you is uh, don't change anything. If th they're telling you use version 4.8.1, use exactly this version. Don't change the name of folder or everything. The less you change, the less problem you have at the end. If you have some compiling errors, just go to the message board there. I think that will help you, but don't ask me. I'm not very good at Linux. You also can use it under Windows. It's called Dream SDK. The uh, homepage is dreamsdk.org. It's not used native in Windows. It's more a, a virtual Unix environment. After compiling the C compiler, uh, you have to compile the Kalisti OS system. Uh, that's libraries that give you access to the Dreamcast hardware. If both compiling was successful, you can start with development for Dreamcast. So next question is what hardware you need for the development. Uh, first of all, you need a PC. That's the most important. Like I told, I'm using Linux. The reason I use Linux, I started with the development at 2005 around with the first tests. And at this time there was nothing working on Windows. And yeah, so I stayed with Linux. For testing my games, I'm using a broadband adapter. Through this, I can send the game file directly from my PC to the Dreamcast. The good thing is it's very simple and fast. But on the other hand, the debugging is a little bit complicated, especially when you are programming beginner. Also the broadband or ethernet adapter is nowadays very expensive. And so this is not the best option I would choose nowadays if I start. There's a much easier way for you. Just use your Windows PC, install Dream SDK, and you shouldn't have any problem with the compiling stuff. The little bit more complicated, but it's not really complicated, point is to test the software. You have to make a burnable CD or you test it on a Dreamcast emulator. The program file the compiler gives you is not an image file. It's an ELF file, that's the internal Dreamcast file. And you have to convert the ELF file to an image file. And this file you can burn on CD and play on a real Dreamcast, or you just test it on a Dreamcast emulator. To make an ELF file to an image file, there are a few steps necessary. Someone wrote a program that does all the steps for you automatically. So it should be nowadays very easy to convert ELF to an image file. I'm not very good with the Dreamcast emulation, what the emulator can do. Normally an emulator have some 
debugging options. That means testing your software and find errors is much easier. If you just use a coders cable and suddenly your program crashes during gaming, it's very difficult to find where the error comes from or why the program is crashing. If you have an emulator with debugging functions, you can go in step for step and can find out why the program is crashing. For example, it can be a division through zero because something on your code is wrong and then it's with an emulator much easier to find out than with a coder's cable. The only thing what you have to do from time to time if, you use, if you're working with emulator is testing your program also on a real hardware to make sure that it's also running perfectly on a real hardware. So that's it for the development system. I think we're coming closer to coding. Thanks for listening and see you next time.